Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in unity of one faith, of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The blessed word of God. I would like to focus just a few minutes with you. On verse 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Today, this is known among most as the fivefold ministry explanations. What I want to speak to you from my heart is. You know, it's just such a wonderful honor to, first off, be called unto salvation, to have that blessed opportunity, to be able to feel the beckoning of the Lord and to respond as he would have his children to respond, to turn at the voice of their master, their father, their Lord, and come running. Such a wonderful blessing to have that. But then as we began to draw near and where the Lord would lead us in our path, in our day, the Lord begins to identify things about ourselves, about individual uniqueness among us that begins to shape and mold us towards the calling that he has preordained. For each of us, the prophets recognized that the Lord had knowledge of them before they were even from the womb. So God has a purpose and he has a plan and he has a design for us. But I'm a little troubled, as I'm sure many of you are. It's some of the things I see in our forums and in our media connections, networking, about people being a little arrogant about their self-professed callings. Now, don't take me wrong, folks. I think zeal is a wonderful thing as long as we keep our humility intact, understanding that we are greatly blessed just to be among God's children, first off, that we can carry a A message to a lost world that needs God so much, as we all do. The difference in us being children of God by confession is we recognize our daily need. We know how desperately we need our wonderful, wonderful, loving Lord, our Father, who gave his all for us. He deserves it. He deserves our best, our most noble effort, to our very last breath that we take in this life. So what I want to ask you folks to consider doing is consider not to be arrogant, to be humble, to be meek, to come to the Lord hungry, and thirsty for the things of God. To force yourself to change your habits. To change your schedule. To maybe reduce yourself a little bit in life of your own expectations so that you can slice some parts out of your schedule that otherwise would occupy you from Time you can dedicate to be in the private chamber of prayer with God. Because that's where you find him. 
is in the innermost private chamber of prayer. And don't do all the talking. Let him do the talking. Go ahead and say, Lord, you already know anything I can tell you about. What can I educate you about? It is I who need to hear from you, Lord. There's nothing that I could teach God. And let the Lord melt your soul. Let him break your stony heart. Let's quit calling ourselves apostles, prophets, all these big titles. You know what the apostles of the Bible were? They were writers of epistles. They were writers of holy inspired scripture. Where do you think that the apostles chosen by the Lord himself first being his disciples mentored by him called to become his twelve sent forth in the church age to build to work a network for finding the lost and bringing the message of truth. We are like the apostles. And the apostles are a part of us. Very appreciated, very reverend, very honored. But we got so many folks out there running around today claiming equality with these great martyrs of God who gave their very lives all of them with the exception of John who wrote the book of Revelation were martyred for God and they tried to martyr John and couldn't kill him because God had still something left for him yet to accomplish <clears throat> so when you put these titles on yourself and go around honoring each other Calling yourself apostle this, apostle that, prophet this, prophet that. Think of your place in God. We are low. We need to be low. We need to be humble that we may be used of God. We need to be meek. Not think so highly of ourselves. We need to root ourselves and ground ourselves in this word. And give glory and honor to God. Yes, it's it's good to encourage one another in the deliverance of God's word. For when the messenger brings it, and when he has a message for the Lord, it's like a burning torch. It's something that the light just shines out from. In the pureness of Scripture. The pureness of God's word, not our wisdom, but the wisdom which is already inspired within the words of these scriptures. As God begins to anoint, as God begins to bring the life forth from these words, let us remember in keeping ourselves humble. For the Lord, that He may use us, that we may be used. I'm going to keep this very short today. Be mindful of Him who gives us life. Be appreciative of Him. Love Him enough to separate time every day. There is nothing more important in life than to find our way in Jesus Christ through our day. Every moment that is set before us should be ordered of the Lord. Every corridor should be previously cleared by the Lord before we walk it. Our days must be rearranged before his presence, before the sun rises. I'm asking you today to join me in unity together. 
that we do the purpose of the Lord for our callings, each of us, together in unity. That we again declare the holy word of God to have authority and rule over our lives in all things. And let us do gracious honor to one another and appreciation of one another. But first and foremost, together in humility, be in one accord for the Lord. For when the Lord was taken up into the clouds before the witnesses, he told them to tarry and wait in Jerusalem until they be endued with power. And a lot may picture this differently, but the way the understanding is important to me is that they were in a holy expectation of the Lord's visitation. That they gathered together in a solemnness of prayer. With a deep flowing of their heart. Awaiting upon the freshing. The refreshing to come from the Lord. And the empowerment of his spirit in their life. To sustain them. To energize them. To renew and to regenerate them daily. And they waited patiently together. In one accord. Anxiously awaiting. The comforter. The Holy Ghost. Let us start each day that way. Force yourself out of bed a couple of hours early. Set the mood of prayer in the quiet times. Because if you don't make it happen. It may not happen. God is giving you the power to make a difference in your life. To open a door of opportunity. That you might enter into the secret place of his presence. Heavenly Fathers, I close this short message. I'm asking that you minister in agreement of spirit. That each one may feel your very presence and receive witness from your presence to be called and beckoned unto your purpose to find themselves in you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you.